In this video, I'll show you how to overclock your Ryzen CPU to its max and beyond. Oh, and I mean that literally. We're going to bypass the 200 megahertz boost limit set by AMD. Before we begin, please subscribe. If you're interested in this type of content like overclocking, optimizing, whether it be CPU, GPU, RAM, or Windows, I do it all on this channel and it'd be a huge help. Okay, so let's get started. You obviously want to go into your BIOS and just go to the advanced menu, go all the way down to AMD overclocking, hit accept, and you want to look for uh, precision boost overdrive. Now you want to set this to advanced. PBO limits, this is like the power limit, the CPU. So I mostly have trash air cooling, just put this to motherboard. This usually also like disable the limits, so it's unlimited power basically. Uh, precision boost overdrive scalar control. This you can put like one or two X. If you put it like, like 10 X, it does also like give more voltage to the CPU, which can have a negative effect. So just do like one X or two X. CPU boost clock override. This you can just do to enable positive and just do 200. This will just give us 200 megahertz more that we can boost to. This obviously depends on your cooling. So your temperature matters, which is why we want to undervolt. Okay. So that's what we're going to do in curve optimizer. But before that, I just want to mention you can't do this on Ryzen 7000 extra D. So like a 7800 extra D or a 7950 extra D. It, like you can put this, but like it'll just have no effect because those CPUs are just locked, but you can still undervolt. So now let's head into curve optimizer. In here, what you want to do is essentially just do all cores. For example, if you have like a 9800 extra D, right? So you change this to negative because we want less voltage because less voltage means lower temperature, which means we can have more frequency to boost. Okay. So usually just do 20. Every CPU I had did 20. If you want to be super safe, just do 15. And if you want to experiment a bit, just do 25 or even 30. You could maybe do 35, but like that's really like a golden sample CPU kind of stuff. And you can even like pass Cinebench with this, but like it would still not be stable in a real like workload, right? For for now, let's just do 25, but I do have a 9950 XRD, which means I have two CCDs, right? So if you have a Ryzen 9, it'd pretty much be the same, but you just have two uh, points to set. So for example, I found my CPU to be good at 25 on CCD zero. And on CCD one, I just do 20 because it's safe. And like, it matters way less. Okay, but now you're probably asking, is that really all? And for most of you, probably yes, right? But there is a way to bypass this uh, 200 megahertz limit. And as you can see, if we try higher than 200, it just says error, like invalid. And how to check if you have this feature, which allows to bypass this is an ASUS, you go to a overclock tuner, you do expo one. And as you can see, there's something called ECLK mode. Essentially what it does is every CPU has a base clock that affects everything, right? So like it affects the speed of the CPU, the speed of your RAM, the speed of your SSD, the speed of your GPU as well. And if we overclock those, it's just going to be bad. It's like not good. And that's just because it's, you know, everything combined. So what ECLK does is it's another external clock that, that only affects the CPU clock speed. Okay. By default, it's set at 100, right? For example, we can do 102. And what this does is it gives us 2% more frequency. So for example, our max frequency on the cache CCD, for example, is 5750. And we time that by 1.02, that gives us 5865. So that's our max frequency we can hit right now, okay? But because we are doing this, we do need to step back our PBO settings. So for example, curve optimizer, um, I wouldn't be able to do 25. I'd probably need like 10, maybe even like five. Maybe I could even disable this. It's so like the voltage will be sufficient, you know? And if you are using ECLK, you could even do scale or 10 X because this might be needed. So it's the same concept. And let's say, for example, you have a 9800 XRD, right? You could match a 9950 XRD in clock speed, right? By doing 105.5. But, for example, curve optimizer, if you set it to all core, this is always 
and you might even need positive uh, like voltage. So it's more voltage than default. But if you do this with Curve Optimizer, you're always gonna have more voltage. So it's, you're always gonna have higher temps and that's just bad overall. And that is where we wanna use uh, Curve Shaper. So for example, here, with this type of uh, like ECOK, right? You would probably need like positive and then 15. And for example, for that you'd set and Curve Shaper, the last six settings, so the high frequency and the max frequency to enable, positive, and then do 15. And just imagine I do this for everything else here. So like this, 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 and this. Like everything else like above it, you can just do negative and then 20, for example. Okay, a few more things I want to mention is that if you go to manual CPU overclocking, you can actually disable the throttle link so you can sustain more uh, frequency. And also, if you are using a 9950XGD, your CCD1 with ECLK will go above 6 gigahertz. And that's really hard to run, so you might even need to disable the second CCD. And the way you do that is you also do it in this menu and just go over here. And CCD01, you just do zero and everything here. All right, now I want to show you how to test the stability. So, for example, I put curve optimizer negative 40. So, it's very likely that it's unstable. So, the way I usually find out it's unstable is I open IDA64, I go over here, I enable the first four, I hit start, and look how fast it's just going to error out. And as you can see, 25 seconds in, and I got an error. So for example, this is how I would test. And another thing I would do was I would open OCCT. And in OCCT, you just go to CPU, do mode extreme. Um, you want to do core cycling. And you can just do like four to five minutes on each core. And like, if you run this and it passes everything, you should be fine. All right, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a sub and a like. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.